Loudoun County, Virginia, infamous Loudoun County, the school board yesterday met to discuss a policy designed to stop what WJLA, Nick Minock over there, refers to as they want to stop public and private criticism of the school board. I just want to reiterate the two words I used, public and private criticism. Don't you dare in your living room say something negative about the Loudoun County School Board. They're specifically trying to stop this criticism from school board members, staff aides, that is the people who work for the school board members. If the school board approves the policy, aides would be required to refrain from conduct that disparages, criticizes, or defames the school board, school board members, LCPS, and LCPS employees, either publicly or privately, or that interferes with the implementation of a decision made by the school board. The impetus for this policy change? Apparently, there's an aide who works for the Loudoun County School Board who doesn't like boys in the girls' locker rooms, who is a mother in Loudoun County, is a taxpayer in Loudoun County, and would like to be represented, her views, have, have her views represented. That woman joins us now, I'm so happy to say. Abby Platt is here. She's an aide to Deanna Griffith, who is a Loudoun County School Board member in the Ashburn District. Abby's also a mother of three Loudoun students, and she joins us on the phone. Abby, great to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. I appreciate it. So take me back to your concerns in Loudoun County. You, you, uh, you're very close to all of this. You're, you're a mother of, of three Loudoun County students. You pay taxes in Loudoun County. You know how the school board operates. In fact, you work for one of the school board members. So uh, what did you see that concerned you? Well, this goes years back, right? Um, we have a daughter in high school and one in middle and one in elementary so we've been in Loudoun County Schools for a long time. Um, when they very first adopted policy 8040, which opens up the bathrooms to whomever wants to do whatever, um, our son was standing at a urinal in the fifth grade and a girl in his class walked in and stood right next to him and stared him down. That was our first exposure to what this policy would mean for our family. It's a total violation of privacy. And, um, and so, of course, back then I began to speak. Um, I've been going to school board meetings for years. Then fast forward, and, and at the time that that policy passed, uh, we were most concerned about our daughter who at the time was in middle school because of uh, PE and changing her clothes. Mm -hmm. It never in a million years would have occurred to us that it'd be our little boys in elementary school that would have that first exposure. But then, you know, last year, sure enough, our daughter who had then, you know, graduated and gone up to high school, there was a boy in the girls locker room uh, or a boy in the girls locker room. And we said, hold on. I, this cannot, this is not acceptable. So I have been advocating for the safety of my children for years. Yes. Um, my association and, and work with Dina is relatively new. I've only been working with her for a couple of months and surely they don't, they don't want to hear any criticism from me or anyone else. Um, but this policy is directed so, uh, specifically at staff aides. Was one of the mo uh, the, the, um, reasons you decided to start working uh, as an aide for the Loudoun County School Board was because you wanted to get closer to this in order to affect change positively? Is that why you're there? A hundred percent, yeah. So when Dina ran for school board, um, I didn't know her at all. I didn't have any connection to her, but she was challenging Harris Mahedeby, who um, was was running for re-election, one of only two running for re-election, and he was poised to become the chair. And we said, no way. Harris Mahedevi um, had lied to his community of Muslims and told them that he was opposed to policy 8040, which he shepherded through committee. It was with his help that it went to the full board. So for me, that was a flagship item. I thought, no way. I'll do anything I can to defeat that guy. And there was yeah. a group of us who worked our tails off to help Dina get elected. And then at that point, she said, you know, would you consider continuing to help me? And I said, yes. 
So uh, now, so now you are you're an aide for her, and again, Loudoun County taxpayer, you you've been voicing your concerns about all of this, and all of a sudden, the Loudoun County School Board is looking for a way. It looks like to silence you in particular. Is that how you read it? It it feels they're pointed at the committee meeting that they held yesterday. Um, they typically what happens? You come in, and there's a piece of paper at the there's a desk where speakers, you know, can make public comment. You walk in, you sign your name on the paper. There was no paper. And we learned that, no, this, it's now online. You have to sign up in advance online. This has never been the practice. There were two other committee meetings that happened yesterday. Both had the same um, disclosure on the agenda. In retrospect, when I went back to the agenda, Sure enough, it said it didn't have public participation on there. So if I had keyed into that, I would have seen it. Uh, but regardless, it seems pretty um, intentional that that would be removed from an agenda. And, that, and, and remarkably, there were three people. Somehow they knew. I still cannot find anything online. And if anyone should know the process, it's me for crying out loud. <laughs> Yeah. So somehow three people were able to be alerted to sign up in advance online, which again has never been the practice, not for committees. No, so it does but they, feel but there's a, pretty personal. And there's a, well, and there's also the history uh, this year. The the Loudoun County School Board has been moving to clamp down uh, more and more on uh, kind of these embarrassing episodes where people rightfully point. Uh, to their sins and shortcomings, uh, and they don't want this publicized. In fact, they have moved to turn off the cameras during public comment. They do not want citizens and their concerns and complaints uh, being publicized. Uh, and in fact, uh, Nick Minock at WJLA points out that that decision came after Muslims, Christians, and Hindus all came to a February 27th meeting this year and spoke out against this policy you're talking about. Uh, and uh, in Loudoun County, they've tried to really shut down and any ability for the public to see this. That is exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. They don't want to hear from the public. They don't want to see them. Uh, they will go to any length to to squelch First Amendment rights. <laughs> so, so what were you what were you thinking? Were you, were you, you were at the meeting last night? I was there and I, I'll confess. I, I was mad. I was livid. I walked out of there livid. I, I always think, okay, um, I, I know when I'm walking into that place, uh, when I go and I'm on the time card, right, I, I stamp the time card, um, I'm, I'm in a different place. But when I walk in there as a parent, um, and, and that's, what this, this is, that's what this policy seeks to do is to say, you cannot in private, not publicly or privately, interfere with the implementation of any policy. So they're trying to say to me, sorry, you check your parent card at the door. And, and not, just at their, not just at the admin door, at my own home. And I'm sorry, that's unacceptable. So it's unconstitutional. And there's absolutely no way that um, I will stop advocating for the safety and the education of my children. There's no way. It's one of the craziest so things I've ever head. heard of. The, the, school board, I, the school board policy is that if you criticize the school board members as, a, as, an, as an active aid to the school board, uh, that you will run afoul of their policies. In, in, and not just in public, in private. If you do it within the confines of your own right. living room, you'd be in trouble? Uh, that's the way the policy reads. If it were, if it's adopted in in its current suggested form, yes, that would be true. So, what's going to happen now? I mean, they, so they're considering this. Uh, does that mean it's actually going to come to pass? Um, if I were betting, uh, they have the votes. They absolutely have the votes. And um, one board member, who I will not publicly criticize. <laughs> um, even said, you know, we, we talk in our own home about freedom of speech, but you're not free from the consequences of what you say. And I thought, are you, it's astounding. It is astounding to me. The, the, the kind of language and the, the, the extent they'll go to 
to silence anyone who, heaven forbid, does not agree with them. I, it's astounding. Is it is it just my imagination, or is this the single most sensitive group of people that has ever lived in this country? They are so scared of people being critical of them. They're supposed to be serving the public. I think they're arrogant. I think they're entitled, um, and they feel that they can do whatever they want to get whatever they want, and it is wrong. It's it's, it's wrong. amazing. So in the event that they do pass this, what kind of consequences could they impose on you if you dare criticize them from your living room or perhaps even on a radio program? What would happen to you? Well, I would be fired for sure. I would be fired immediately. <laughs> So, so they want to get rid of you. I, I the plan know. is to silence you or at least to get rid of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you going to do? If this passes, what's your plan? I will absolutely show up at the next school board meeting and I will speak because I am a parent first. And um, these are my kids. I, I think for me, there are so many raw edges in – in the coming and going with family and our kids spend an enormous amount of time in these schools. So if I, above all else, I'm a parent. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to get fired. I'm happy to get fired. And if they want to uh, break the law doing so, then I welcome that. I welcome the exposure that will come from speaking the truth and shining light on a, an organization that continues to disregard the law. I am happy to have that conversation all day long, every day. Well, God bless so you. For I this. welcome it. And Abby, I, I have to believe we're talking to Abby Platt again, an aide to Dina Griffith, one of the Loudoun County School Board members. My impression is that Dina Griffith has been very supportive of you and will continue to be. She has, and bless her for that. You know, she. She ran a campaign uh, based on transparency and on accountability to taxpayers and to her constituents. And to her great credit, um, you know, they've, they've tried to twist her arm and, and keep her from speaking as well. So she's, I, I've appreciated the opportunity to um, work with her. And, um, and she's, yeah, she's had my back and she's, she has stood up to them herself. Yes. So, well, it's just... Abby, um, please keep up the good fight. Please keep taking these fascists on. You have a welcome place on this radio program and inside of all of the homes of everyone in Loudoun County who listens to WMAL anytime you want. We'd be so grateful to have you on. If they want to give you and the parents of Loudoun County hell, then we will return it to them. So thank you very much for coming on. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon.